Next up, I would like to invite our friends from a distant land up in BC, Josh and Kelly from Dragonfly Earth Medicine, to talk a little bit about their DEM Pure certification. Hello, Eugene family. We're going to trade off. Yeah. First of all, I just wanted to thank Eugene. This community is a, a community that's inside of my heart. Um, I came here first in 1990, and it blew my mind with um, the amazing, alternative, forthright, honest individuals that is now turned into this community. And I really want to thank you all for caring about uh, the cannabis industry and what's going on right now. And I feel like you all have the ability to be the leaders in this industry, and the time is now. The federal government is going to be coming in and making decisions for us. Organic standards are going to be regulated by FDA and USDA. And my question to you as a community is, is that what you want for this cannabis industry? It's beautiful that we're here in Eugene and there's a list of different organic options for certification because everywhere else you go in the world, it's like, oh shit, it's synthetic and it's uh, a big problem. So um, we're cannabis farmers for life. We live on the land. We love nature. We do everything from scratch and really always have ever since we le left to the distant lands of British Columbia. But um, we're, we're really passionate about it, and we do believe that um, our certification is really not meant to have a label of organic or NOP or USDA. It's really an activist movement. It's like a, it's a lifestyle. And our ingredients with the people that the farms that come to visit, uh, to check in with us and to get certified, um, we have a vigorous test and, and, and a talk that we go through, but we ask about every single ingredient from the very beginning to the ending product. We look at concentrates, we look at flowers, we look at metables, and we try and keep the whole entire process 100% natural from beginning to end. And our product, we, we're, we're done with using the word organic, unfortunately, because I don't have faith in it anymore. I want to have faith in it. I know that the way that I've been practicing my organic cultivation of cannabis for 20 years has been, you know, really looking at all of the ingredients that are on products or making my own ingredients. But unfortunately, and I know this because of the labeling process and what I have to deal with the Department of Agriculture in every state, we have our own products, we have to put out our labels, and I have to prove to them the word organic. And organic now can be 30% of my product, doesn't even have to be listed, and it can still be listed as organic. This is a problem I feel in the industry because people are not looking into what that certification actually means. What is it being preserved with? What are the stabilizers in it? What kind of things are being added to these products that are certified organic that are killing our live soils. The bacteria levels and the fungi levels that are in our soils are incredibly, like, like they can change with, with anything. You know, there, there's a preservatives that are put in so many of these organic certified um, products out there and one of the stabilizers is phosphoric acid and that's something that, oh, we, we didn't even think about it. But the amount of microbiology that just phosphoric acid alone kills is just, do you want to be bringing that into your gardens that maybe you've been working really hard on creating a living soil for 15 years? And I know for a fact that a lot of you all are gardeners that have beautiful plots that have been working really hard on your soils. And you take that soil building and that soil production and what's coming out of it very seriously. And I encourage you all to really look at what it is that you're putting in there. A lot of the people that ask about the, the peer certification are not people that we really need to scrutinize a whole list of products because it's not really what it's about. 
we are more about raw materials and using things, you know, to, to create. We, we've created programs that anyone could scrutinize to help people not ever need that extra product, that extra pesticide doesn't come up for us because it's, we have a whole program that we've that we put together by helping all these people for all these years. So with our certification comes um, everything that we've tried, that we've learned to this moment based off all the farms that we've worked with, and, and that goes from Europe through Canada through, North, uh, through America here, and, and we have the ability to learn from lab reports from all these different states on residues, and so we take into account half-lives, you know, and all that of pesticides, and so that's why when we start thinking about pesticides, it's, it's we would rather just show the program that bypasses it. Yeah, so our program and what we're doing, let's just talk a little bit about what it is to be pure certified. It's a really difficult process. It's not something that we're gonna take lightly and oh, I was a synthetic farmer for many, many years and now I really wanna step into organics and I wanna get a pure certificate. A pure certification is a lifestyle. Our first question that we ask these people who give us a call on the telephone and say, hey, I want to be pure for certified, I ask them, do you care about what you eat? Are you interested in the holistic attributes of what it really is to be beyond organic and to be pure? Because that's really important to us. If somebody is not interested in what they're eating, then maybe this sort of a certification is not going to encompass a whole holistic view. So I think I could go on um, with what we expect, our expectations. We don't really like to, we like to tell people that they're, they're self-governed, basically. And let's see, sorry, I'm a little bit like for a second here. We make sure that there's six closed loop systems. Does anybody not know what a closed loop system is in here? Do I have to explain closed loop systems? Okay, good. So all of y'all know what a closed loop system is. <laughs> Meaning if you make bubble hash or s anything, you use the leaves back in the worm farm, you use the water and the teas, you know, that's, you're saving, you're, you're regenerating. And uh -huh, re you're not bringing anything in from the outside. So you can be growing your own nutrients, comfrey, alfalfa, chickweed, um, I could go on and on, horsetail, all of these things can be implemented in an indoor growing situation as well as an outdoor growing situation. Number one, it's gonna save a tremendous amount of money if you're growing your own nutrients. Number two, it's not gonna be bringing in any, any outdoor pathogens, which is a major problem that we're having in this cannabis industry because we've been hijacked by mites. All of us have been dealing with it, and if you haven't been dealing with it personally, you definitely know other people who have been dealing with it. So I'm seeing a lot of issues that have come up in this industry, and every single time, the answer to it is closed-loop sustainability. Regenerative closed-loop systems, everything is in-house, you know exactly where your nutrients are coming from. If you have to bring in anything from the outdoors, it's a whole food. It's not something that's gonna be having preservatives, all these many different ingredients. If you're questioning it, it's probably not something that you should be using. So we're really encouraging people to make their own teas, grow all of their you know, cannabis from seeds, so that cuts out a major portion of pathogens as well. That's a closed loop system. Worm farms, it's another closed loop system. How easy is it to put a worm farm outside of your you know, facility and all of your clippings go into the worm farm and that's fully sustainable. Now, if you sprayed those leaves with anything that's questionable, that's a huge lost resource. That's an, a major amount of money that could be going into your worm casting spin that can no longer go in there. So you've caused problems for yourself by trying to get rid of one problem and then now you've got a whole slew of problems behind it. And with it, you know, I could go in with a pesticide issue is because it's been a really big contentious issue here in our community is, you know, to utilize essential oils or now we've got all of these beneficial or biological pesticides. Biological pesticides, it's really something that we all need to really look into. Sure, it's gonna get rid of your, you know, broad mites, but what's it gonna do to your pollinators? 
What's it going to do to all of your trichoderma that's in the soil? I really encourage you all to look at it as a whole holistic view of that everything that I bring into my garden, what is going to happen by bringing it into it? Is it all beneficial or does it have some drawbacks to it? Reusing your soils, no-till, um, adding soil, composting. Um, there's, there's a number of things you can do, whether you're in an indoor facility or whether you're on the land. If you're on the land, we encourage you to grow food. We encourage you to grow fruit, goji berries, superfood berries, astragalus, Chinese herbs, because we're working with cannabis. It's an herb for healing why wouldn't we try and grab as many healing herbs as possible to try and fuse medicine, um, to try and just have a cannabis extract may not be completely fulfilling. Maybe we need to have extra compounds in there so we try and, um, we, uh, try and inspire people to go beyond that, and that's what the PURE certification is about. Um, we could go on and on, but maybe we could you know, ask questions. Or, you know. Yeah. Is there any questions right now? I could. I could go on and on on the soapbox for sure. <laughs> we're very passionate about what it is that we're doing. Our pure certification, it's free. That's how passionate we are. We're not interested in you all having to pay us to prove to us that you're already doing a fully regenerative, amazing cannabis garden. We're here to just say, right on, brothers and sisters, or whatever, you know, here you go. Let's recognize this as a community. Let's realize the importance of taking back our certification. This it's pure certification, yeah, it, 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 it's something that we came up with, but our encouragement is, is that when you are certified, you've made a commitment to us and to the whole certification program that you have to share every single thing that you're doing. If something is not going right, share it with the rest of the community. If something that is going right, it's become a resource. We started out with, we're, we now have 39 farms that are certified and another 68 that are waiting to be certified right now. And it's all because they know that they deserve this. And all they want to do is get better and better and better at regenerative cannabis gardening. And we try and show people what that means by, by, by example, you know, our, our farm is amazing. Um, I wish you could all come. It's, it's uh, really special. Um, we raised our son on it and homeschooled, and then we've done everything natural, so it, it just co it goes into this too. So not to take anything away from the other certification companies and people that are here because they're beautiful, wonderful. They're trying to make it pure, trying to make it good for the masses. We just have chosen to go beyond. We never meant to make it a business. We meant to make it um, an educational um, aspect for people to learn from and for us all to get better at it. Really, we're of the earth and we want to continue to feel healthy. I mean, there's so many stories of people we've helped and, and I would love to go into that, but that's the most inspiring thing. Health is so challenged. Everywhere we go, we're just bombarded with toxins and everything everywhere. And, anything we can do to be micro remediating or bio remediating or probioticing our body or growing a plant better just anything anywhere we have to do it mm -hmm. and nice. and part of sustainability is you all as a community coming together and deciding what your standards are what is really good potent, pure cannabis mean here in Eugene? Why does Eugene as a community need outside sources telling them what they feel clean medicine is? I encourage you all to join together. I know that this is an industry that has come from the dark closets. We have come from a place of being in fear, but now the light is here. It's time to share information, it's time to come out of the closets, and it's time to decide for yourself what it is that pure cannabis means to you because the feds are coming. They are gonna be deciding, and believe you me, if you're not growing beautiful pure medicine, they're gonna be undercutting you. And nobody can undercut synthetic growing any better than the feds can. 
So I think that it's incredibly important that if you want to stay in the game, pure, beautiful, potent medicine with high THCV, high CBD, high CBG, is all what we need to be looking towards. Also these terpenes, you know, if we want to up our terpenes, we know that lemonine is this wonderful, amazing terpene. Well, you grow lemongrass and it's got freaking lemonine in it. You just turn it into a ferment or put it into your, you know, your shredder, Mulch. put it into a mulch and you're going to be upping your lemonine counts. This is not, you know, brain science. And we're not claiming to be scientists. We're ganja growing observationists which I think a lot of people here is. So I encourage you all to be ganja growing observationists and share your observations with everybody else. You, use your labs. I mean, you, there's a lot of, use the labs. Th they're helpful. You know, yeah. it's, it, we're all moving towards something that is going to teach us more. So use the labs, find out where your terpenes are, find, think about what you put in there to get high T. We have high THCV in a bunch of our flowers. I think it's because of everything we do. We're just constantly putting weed leaves in everything. You know what I mean? And, and it's incredible. It's, and, yeah, and, and consistently we're coming up with super high CBG and everybody's like, oh my God, it's the strain. No, it's in the soil. It doesn't matter what strain is coming into our farm. It's coming out high CBG levels because of what we're doing. And the only thing that we're doing is keeping it closed loop. And now the next thing that I wanted to talk about is what does it mean to be pure certified? Or how do you get a pure certification? You get in touch with us. We talk to you. We really have long conversations on what it is that you all are doing, what it is that cannabis means to you, why are you involved in this industry, you know, what is your employment with, you know, people that are coming in, are you paying fair wages, are you being kind to the people that you're working with, are you, is your finished product pure all the way to the end? We don't allow uh, BHO or propane extracts or any hydrocarbon extracts. For, for example, CO2 can be really good in metables and other things. It's, tell me. Do bubble hash. Do it. I, I totally Show agree us. with you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting. Yeah. And, and the conversation here is about CO2 extraction and whether that's pure or not. It's a man-made yep. gas. Yeah. Yeah. But I think However, the, it's the reason, not a hydrocarbon. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I, I totally. <laughs> There's a lot of versions so the of CO2. the conversation is with CO2. We totally agree to There's mushroom CO2 and tank CO2 and... We can agree to, I'm not even disagreeing actually with this conversation whatsoever, but what I am saying is that you decide as a community, this is something that needs to be talked about as a community. This is something that you all need to get together and decide, hey, do we want CO2 extraction and do we still consider that a potent medicine? And with a DEM pure certification, or an agreement, you are agreeing to that this can change at any moment because we're getting better every week. Our certification is changing all of the time because we want to get better. And we're and bringing farmers together. Anytime we can you know, have other farmers working together, it's, it's coming together. Amazing people are supporting each other with ideas, with raw materials. Maybe there are a couple different soil recipes going on. Um, yeah, we're what sharing an amazing IPFM. It's just becoming community involvement. So, okay, you give us a call, and then we talk to you on the telephone. We spend several hours talking to you about what it is that you do, how long that you've been involved in this. And then if you're close to us and we can go out and visit your farm, then usually we spend an entire day at your farm. We're sharing flowers. We're sharing ideas. We're sharing hopes. We're sharing dreams. We're talking about all of the other closed-loop systems that you're going to implement if you haven't already implemented it. And if we can't go to your farm, then another DEM pure certified person or another group is going to come to your farm. 
So the idea is that it's about community building. It's an activist movement that we can take care of ourselves and what we consider pure medicine. And there's some D D pure certified family here in the crowd tonight and give thanks. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not always easy for especially people who are just starting to buy land to get premium land and it takes a long time to transition. But uh, it's a good point about uh, phytoremediators and hemp is an excellent one, sunflowers, uh, mycelium, all the mushrooms. But it's a process and it doesn't happen overnight. You've been working the land for many years and uh, you know it can be overwhelming when you're trying to make money at the same time and you're trying to go through this major restoration, which can take decades. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I agree with you entirely, but I don't think there's really a pure, pure world that we live in. We've got it here in Oregon, we've got a lot of the land in private property, in private timberland, and there's no disclosure of what they're spraying out there. People have been being sprayed with really lethal chemicals, atrazine, you know, 2,4-D. Chemtrails. Chemtrails and all the things that are like people are poisoning our soils. And waters. People are getting pe people are getting pesticide on flowers they never use pesticides on. It's real. And again, what, this comes up? back to community. How is it that we are going to stand up against what's happening unless we all join together? Each one of us is only a drop, but all of us together is a flood. We and need to join together to make these changes because we're all talking about them in our own living room, but we're not talking about it outside of our living room. And that's why these forums are so incredibly important and to encourage you all to challenge people of what practices they're doing. Challenge, challenge us. us. <laughs> Bring Question it on because us, we're willing know? to change. Um, there, it's not a pure world. There's plenty of examples where bacteria has vigorously eaten and completely transformed toxicities. Plenty of examples where plants have pulled heavy metals out of the soil and not put them back into the soil after you remulch them. And uh, garden giants are really easy to grow. They eat through compost. What's better than that? You, you can, it's easy to, to get allies to help you. If you're getting onto a piece of land, awesome. Draw it out. Make some, make some five-year plans, some one-month plans. Um, you know, try, try and uh, maybe ask your neighbors what they're doing, too. We have another question up front here. So, so I'm, I'm very new to organic farming, and this might be kind Welcome. of a broad question. Um, thank you. So we are renting a land uh, right now, and unfortunately, our previous tenants got a little carried away with burning some of their... Uh, random items, whether it was garbage or Plastic. computers, parts, electric, any, it's Everything. really awful. Everything. We've been, we've been trying to dig up stuff and rehabilitate and take care of our fruit trees and, you know, do all that stuff. But, um, we were concerned about planting in the soil just because there's, you know, yeah, raised beds are the way to go. Raised beds help. Yeah. Yep. Raised beds are definitely your, the answer to that. It allows your microbiology to soak into the earth underneath it. You can put rocks above it. You can do a few kinds of sheet mulching style things across the land. First, a bunch of cardboard, a bunch of wood chips, um, and then put your rocks on top and then build a bed on top of it. And you could even inoculate it with some garden giants on the bottom or reishi. Reishi grows amazing on that stuff in there. You, could, you can bury logs, bury reishi, and knock... Hugel, Hugel beds, bury reishi logs in there, and the mycelium grows really vigorous through that. You can have like a medicinal reishi growing underneath your medicinal and then dungeon. And then your raised bed, switch it every three years because what's underneath it has been totally remediated with everything that you've done up above it. So you just keep changing it from area to area, and we've noticed that, you know, the soil that we test underneath those raised beds after three years is coming up clean because of the remediation of the bacteria and the fungi. It's, it's a little redundant to talk about regenerative cannabis farming because cannabis regenerates the soil. Like, that's what we know about hemp. We're, thanks hemp, you, you regenerate the soil, you know? Um, so why is it a big revelation that, oh my God, we're regenerating cannabis? It's natural. All we do is give it food and, and, and nice, you know, organic food and stuff. And 
So, good reminder. Next question. You can, you can email right us if you front. have more questions. First of all, I want, I want to introduce myself. My name is Jerry Norton, and I'm an organic hemp farmer. Blessings. So, um, really? First of all, I'm, nice one. Thank you. So, um, this last year we got the first crop that was sustainable and we got real medicine. We got a 40% CBD to a 003% CBD. And uh, we were able to get approved through the Oregon Department of Agriculture. They came out and tested our, our fields. And we grew, to our knowledge, the best way that we could organically without any pesticides, doing all our organic practices that we know best to do. And uh, of course, with federal guidelines and getting certified organic hemp seed is near to impossible. Obviously, there is some in Colorado right now, but in Southern California. Uh, yeah, but it's such a commodity right now, it's hard to get your hands on. And not only that, going through the system to try to get certified organic seed and to also get organic certification for hemp takes a long time. It takes all the fun out of it. It takes all the fun out of it. So we're doing it ourselves anyway. Mm -hmm. We're like, we're going to do it anyway. And okay. we want to commend you for what you're doing and, and other people in this industry yes. that are making this all happen yes. and making us all go in this direction because we can do it if we go in num There's power in numbers. So yes. more traction, more people, more word out. Um, That's why we wanted to say thank you to everyone for being here, yeah. including everyone that presented tonight. It's all towards the right path. Yes. It's all towards it's the right path. It's just different levels of, 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 right. of consciousness. Right. right. And uh, we, uh, we want to work with you, and we're going to, I want to commend you again for what you've done for us. Uh, we're right back at you. Yeah, thank right. You. So we're, um, we're also hosting the Oregon Hemp Convention in June during Hemp History Week, which is June 11th and 12th at the Portland Expo Center. Sweet. And it's all about sustainability, organic, getting the right people together, and there's power in numbers. So I want to invite everybody out to the go Portland to Expo Center in June. Everyone go to that. For Hemp yeah. History Week. Excellent. So this is our fourth year, at the, and it keeps getting bigger every year. Yep. They can't stop us now. Everyone should be growing hemp on their farm. They should have a few plants of hemp. It's it's, it's easy. I mean, it doesn't get mold. It doesn't get bugs. It's like it's a magic, awesome plant. <laughs> Not feminized, Not but feminized, sexed. Not feminized, but sexed. Not feminized, but sexed. <laughs> We've got time for one or two more questions. Wanted to make sure we heard from everybody. Anybody new? Anybody new? All right. Hi, my name's uh, David. I've been growing for about a year now, and I just my nice quick one. question really is, um, if I were to start trying to be Dragonfly certified, how how long would you estimate that takes? Knowing that I don't really have uh, most of the stuff organic. It's um, not necessarily meant for personal gardens or small gardens. It's kind of more for you know lar larger scale gardens that are trying to um, prove to the community that they're growing pure medicine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And by all means, get in touch with us, and we can show you everything that we're doing. How long would you estimate those farms take? I'm uh, sorry? How long would you estimate those farms take to kind of get on your program and, and get going? Oh, we I mean, ask them what they're doing. We do, they don't have to do a new thing to, to start being pure certified. We're, we're asking that, you know, we will go to the farm. We'll find out other community members in the area. We'll know what they're doing. Sometimes it can take two weeks, and sometimes it can take up to six months, depending on us being able to get out there. But usually we're really not interested in anybody giving us even a call or getting in touch with us about a pure certificate until you already have six closed loops in place. And we know that you're moving on to more. The beautiful thing about closed loops is that they're incredibly addictive. And once you have one, you want another one. And then once you've got six, then you want to implement 12 because you're saving so much money and your medicine is becoming higher yields with more potent terpenes in medicine that you just want to keep getting better and better at it. And while all of your brothers that are you know, not using closed loop systems are dealing with incredible amounts of pathogens that are being passed from one another, you can remain separate from that. 
because your closed loop system is staying within your own farm. Okay, thank you very much. All right, one more question. I've got two hands. All right, hers was first. We'll make it quick, do both. <laughs> I just want to promote the book by Doug Fine, Hemp Bound. I bought 60 copies of this book and got them out last year. I got three with me. I'm selling it at my cost, 15 bucks, toward the next agricultural revolution. And also, he talks about bioremediating soil. There's a guy named Ford in Kentucky who is uh, uh, buying up brown fields and we're going to remediate them with hemp and also the coal mines and the tobacco. And also Paul Stamet's book, uh, Mycelium Running, Running yeah. How Mushrooms Can Help Save the World. Mycofiltration, mycopesticides, mycoremediation, mycomedicine. Trad my Cotter Organic Mushroom Cultivation. Uh, it's wonderful. And then uh, Harry McCormick, you got to read his book, Transition. And he was the co-founder of Oregon Till. It's 20 or 30 bucks online at sunbowfarm.org. And what do you know about garlic spray, grapefruit seed extract, and maxi crop? Um, we know a lot about different types of foliar sprays. We have developed an IPFM, and we've worked with over a thousand gardens to come up with observational research on what works and what doesn't against irified broads, spider mites, uh, powdery mildew, downy mildew, all of these things that um, we're dealing with right now in the root cannabis aphids, industry. Fungus gnats. Yeah, fungus gnats, root aphids. And what we're finding is that utilizing microbes to get rid of pathogenic microbes and macrobes to get rid of pathogenic macrobes. Nobody does it better. If you are trying to get rid of mites, then you use mites to get rid of those mites. You do not try to think that you can outsmart Mother Nature. She will win every single time. We are utilizing vermi botanical washes on your plants to create a beautiful environment for when you bring in your predators. We utilize nematodes in the soil. You can utilize a grapefruit seed, seed extract wash for sure. I don't think that if you know it's staying on your leaves and you're creating a nice environment for these, you know, uh, predators that you're ordering offline. So we have a lot of ideas. You can always email us. We're open. Maybe you use an essential oil mix and you spray and it's working. Maybe the essential oil mix turns into oh, I want to get predators. Maybe the predators get on the leaves and go oh shit, there's essential oils. It doesn't really work. Yeah, maybe you're using neem and karanha in your soil, and you're like, yeah, this is good. And then all of a sudden you get uh, uh, fungus gnats and root aphids, and you're like, oh, shit, I got to get root. Uh, I have to nematodes. get some predator nematodes or predator soil mites. And then you put them in there, and like, oh, they don't like neem and karanha. So it's, it's sort of a great conversation. Should we use biological pesticides, which potentially harm the pollinators? Should we just use predator mites because they're just animals that eat and then go away? We like predators right now. Mm -hmm. We don't like to be covered in oil, really, you know? If you cover your skin in oil, it doesn't feel that good, and it can burn in the sun really easy. It's definitely the same for plants. And you're killing cyanobacteria on the leaf structure, which is able to fight a spore, a powdery mildew spore that lands on a healthy cyanobacteria-filled leaf. It's going to be eaten immediately by all of the beneficials on that leaf. If you're utilizing mass amounts of uh, essential oils and other types of sprays and these azimaxes and all of these things out there, you're totally totally demolishing your cyanobacterias on your leaves, which know how to deal with the PM and DM way better than we do. What we want to do is create a wonderful environment for these things to thrive in that can get rid which of our Which allow our medicinal pathogens. compounds to rise, which give us better medicine in the end, which is totally natural and healing our neighbors and our family. It's the circle. If it doesn't fit into the circle, don't use it. One more in back here. All right. Thank you. I had a quick question. Um, I, I see you guys in the stores, and I love you guys. You offer a great product. Uh, I was wondering if you could comment about your story and how maybe you got started, and 
how it's transitioned into the products, but the services and are you still doing the products or are you transitioning more of the service or is it 50-50? Well, we have to do products because our certification is free, so that's not going to help us out too much. Um, but the way that we got into this is I, am, I work with health and well-being of pregnant mothers and babies. And one year uh, back in 91, I had a, um, oh, 92, I had a big bag of pregnancy tea blend that I felt like was just a little bit too old. And I was having my new spring herbs and stuff come up. And I just thought, hey, you know, I wonder what would happen if I put this on my female cannabis plant, female herbs. And wow. It was so massive that we realized that we needed to start treating this plant as a feminine being. It is a sentient being. We all need to ask what it is that the cannabis plant wants. Let's not take this out of <laughs> the equation. What does cannabis want? And cannabis grows the best from itself and also feminine herbs. So we took a wonderful blend of lots of different herbs that I give women to grow beautiful, healthy babies, and that is the base of all of our nutrient line. We don't have any inert ingredients. Um, we have our fillers, our alfalfa, nettle, horsetail, wild yam, and I don't know if any of you all noticed, but we list every single thing on, their, on our labels, and it took me a year and a half fighting the Department of Agriculture, the EPA, the USDA organic certification. I could go on and on of who I had to fight to list every single ingredient. They on would rather label. us not list it. They so much easier. Us, just put inert. It's way easier. If you just put inert, then it will be easier, but. We, just like a, million, a bunch of amazing people here in Eugene, just studying mycology, just studying herbs, always, always. And then when we moved, we moved far away, an hour and a half away from town. We lived on a home, we live still on that homestead. And we just, we just grew based off what was available on our land. We didn't have the grow store to go to. So that's what really just steeped us into using those materials. And that's what gave us rise to that product. That's why it's a small product. It's not a big bulk soil product. It's a small product. Grow your own, you know, use yeah, that as a base. Yeah, that's why we list all of the ingredients Collect because we're hoping own. that you all grow it yourself. It's not difficult to grow all of these herbs yourself. If you've got, you know, a um, hundred, hundred gallon pots, why can't you take five of those and dedicate it to your biomass that you're going to feed the rest of the 94 plants? Or lettuce for lunch. Yeah just to try to diversify sort of this monoculture, monocropping that we have going on because that's one of the real reasons why pathogens are such a big part of our uh, industry right now. I'm sorry, I went off on a tangent there. I hope, I hope. <laughs> Did you have a question? I think we have one more right here. Yeah, yeah hi, so uh, sorry to put you guys on the spot while you're up there on stage, but yeah. you know, I know you. you have a lot of passion and can deal like with it. the question. Yeah, um, please. So uh, would you be willing to work with Certified Kind to do a full material review of your products so that we can allow them in our certification? Because what? right, <laughs> what I said is, would you be willing to work with us so that we can evaluate your material to see if it's allowed in our certification program? Sure. Because My right, materials? The Dragonfly Earth Medicine? Yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. of course. Okay, excellent, because right when, now. When do we start? Yeah. Fantastic. Hey, let's let's, let's join forces. We already okay. did it yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Of course, and by me saying that let's, I've let's lost work together. faith, by me saying that I've lost faith in organics, I certainly haven't lost faith in the people that are trying to bring forth organics. I've just lost faith in what the word organic what? means to us anymore. And it's a concern that I have in this cannabis industry. Because right now I know for sure that there's a lot of biological pesticides that are being certified. And then we're not looking at that as a holistic view and what's happening to our, our pollinators because of these things that are being certified. I think that this is more of a neuro-linguistic problem than we are willing to admit. The words are not working right yeah. for what we want to do. The problem is okay? words. 
The organic doesn't work, and I'm telling you, I've been involved in that for 50 years. I've brought some of the founders of the industry to, to, to Oregon here and started a lot of these movements. The same thing is true with the cannabis thing. I make a product called Hemp Shield, which is the world's first hemp oil containing wood finish and deck sealer. Nice. Now, we found out last year through these master beekeepers back east yeah. that it turns out that the bees really like the hemp shield on their hives. Oh. When's the last time you heard something good about the bees? Okay. Now, this the truth of it is, under the nomenclature and the terms of what we're saying up there, hemp shield might not be as pure as you might like it to be, right. although it's absolutely less toxic than your body or my body or anything like that. So we really are suffering under a, 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 a terminology issue here right. of not knowing how to describe what we're doing the right way. We've been okay? a country fair long enough to know that words just are too fun to play with. It's also just... true that I discovered that the hemp shield is the best thing to seal all the open wood in a grow so that you don't get powdery mildew. Okay, and again, here we go. Is it a, is, does it fit their rules? No. Am I talking about something that I want you to eat? No, I'm not either. So it's right on and it's appropriate, but it doesn't fit our terminology. It's, We're limited by words. Yeah, and I, and I think this is a conversation that we all need to continue as a community. And that's what we're encouraging with this pure certification. We're not asking anyone who's pure certified to be doing anything on their farm that we don't do. We're going above and beyond because we feel like this plant is worth it. Because this plant has given me everything that I have in my life. And this is what I want to do to give back to it. And I really hope that you all can see this plant as such a potent medicinal, as a master plant, that it's time to give back. Josh, Kelly, thank you so much again for making such thank an incredible you, journey. Yeah. Thank you so we much. We appreciate every, everyone. A few closing remarks to make. First, I really got to thank my sponsors again for this event. The only way we can keep this event free to the people here in Eugene is through the generous support of our donors. So again, The Drop, Lindsay Jacobson, also owns a medication destination and uh, runs the WLC. And then Wes with Wild West, Boom Extract, and Baker Brothers. Thank you so much. You're giving the people the information tonight. Thank you so much. And if you haven't already entered to win, we are giving away two free Cultivation Classic tickets through OG Analytical at the booth. So fill out a form. I'll be doing the drawing at 9 o'clock sharp, and you must be present to win. And I also wanted to open up the floor to continued dialogue. If you have questions for either Bethany Sherman at OG Analytical or any of my staff at Oregon's Constant Gardener, don't hesitate to reach out. We want to hear from you and we want to continue to network because together Eugene is rising so quickly to being one of the most incredible cannabis cultivation communities across the West Coast and you guys are all a part of it. So keep that dialogue open. And I also wanted to remind people that video footage of these events is available online, courtesy of Stardog Botanicals. I will leave this slide up at the end of the night so that everybody can record that. The video footage is amazing, and you can go back all the way to the second Cannabis Science Pub ever produced here. And please, we want to hear your feedback on the evaluation. So there are forums at the OG Analytical booth. After you sign up to win your Cultivation Classic ticket, just take a minute to give us your feedback. If there's a topic you'd really like to hear about, or if you are an expert on a subject, let me know. We've got a full year ahead of us, and it's all of us coming together that's created such an incredible event. So thank you all, and I want to see you on May 31st for sustainability as our Cannabis Science Pub topic. And everybody, please enjoy the networking portion. Meet, greet, have a pint, have a slice of pizza, and we'll see you next month. Thank you so much.